A 3D printer has many different kind of parts. And what are the purpose for these parts? Some are obvious and some are not that obvious. When you're starting with 3D printing, you can be very baffled about what it is and where it's for. In this video, I'm going to break down every part of a 3D printer and let you know exactly where to look for it. Coming up on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hello, I'm Zachary and this channel is about 3D printing with tips, tricks, tutorials, how to review news, anything 3D printing or 3D printer related, you can find right here on this channel. If you're new here and not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and hit the notifications button to get the latest news and videos right in your YouTube alerts. And thanks for being here. Like I mentioned in the intro, today we are going to look to most of the parts you can find on a regular 3D printer. As you know, I only have Cartesian style 3D printers. So I'm going to all the basic components of a regular 3D printer. Because when I started with 3D printing, for me, this was the hot end. And this was a extruder. And this was a print bed. But sometimes you can get into groups or conversations where parts are going to be named and you are just agreeing on it, but you don't know wh which part is what. So in this video, when we are going to talk about a heater block or a power supply unit, well, that one is very obvious, but an idler, a, a tooted gear, a timing belt, everything I'm going to show you right in this video. These are the Cartesian style 3D printers. I mentioned them in a other video. I will put the link here in the right corner. And basically those two printers are the i3 style 3D printers. It has a z-axis gantry and you have different kind of setups with those kind of 3D printers. In this case, this 3D printer, the Prusa i3 MK2 3D printer, this is a clone, has two Z-axis, a dual Z-axis setup. The Ender 3, however, has just one single Z-axis lead screw. Lead screws come in different kind of forms, single start or a dual start or even four starts. Also, lead screws have a different kind of pitch. When I bought the CTC, it had a threaded rod. A threaded rod has a different kind of pitch than a official lead screw. Lead screws are drived through a metal coupler. Sometimes you find 3D printers with a tube as a coupler. That is also how it can work. Usually you have on a 3D printer, you have a metal or aluminum coupler which is attached to a stepper motor. Like the Prusa one, you have two aluminum couplers and also two stepper motors. Those two are working together. There are some setups where there is a timing belt between the two lead screws to get them also synchronized together so that your gantry is moving at the same height without even having a little tilt in it. What can I tell about the gantry and also the carriage? Because it has some wheels, we call it a carriage. Well, in this case, you have some linear bearings, which uses two smooth rods to move over it. Well, let's take a look at the gantry together with the carriage. In this case, the Ender 3 has one 2020 aluminum extrusion where the carriage is running over it. The V rollers on this kind of setup. You have one of them is a eccentric nut. This eccentric nut makes sure that you are able to put some tension on the rollers so that your 
carriage is running smoothly without even having a wobble. So in case of the carriage from the Prusa style 3D printer, you will have some bearings that run over smooth rods. Just like the bed, the bed also have the same kind of principle. So the carriage runs through a timing belt, toothed gear, over the smooth rods, just like this. This runs over the x-axis, okay? Then what you also see is a two kind of setup. In this case, for the Ender 3, you've got a Bowden style extruder, which means that in this case, the extruder is on the back side of the Ender 3. When you take a look at the Bowden style extruder, you have a setup with a single geared extruder. There you have one single bushing with a gear with some teeth, making sure that the filament is running through the PDFA tube. The idler is making sure that there is enough tension, filament is running through the PDFA tube. And then for the double geared extruder, the idler for the single one is changed for a toothed gear. That is a bushing with some teeth and then the gear on the bottom. A Bowden tube runs to the carriage. And then with some tube couplers, the tube stays on its place. There I used, I used a zip tie to make sure that the tube stays inside. You have also those red or blue or different kind of holders uh, to make sure that it is tight and secured. Also where the hot end is, there is also the same kind of setup. In case of the Prusa style, the direct drive, this is a direct drive extruder setup. So for the direct drive, the stepper motor is attached to the carriage. Your filament is going inside here and then runs over the direct drive setup into the hot end. So this is the hot end assembly. You have the PTFA tube that runs into the tube coupler. And then we have something called like the cooler block and the heater block. On the tip, there is the nozzle. The nozzle is connected with the heater block and the heater block is heated with the heater cartridge. Between the heater block and the cool fins or the cooler block, it's connected with a heat brake. The heat brake is the part where the filament is going through here into the nozzle. Always make sure that, that those two are well enough connected, making sure that there is no leaking from the top. And then you have on the side, one side the cables from the heater cartridge and also wires for the thermistor. The thermistor is going to monitor which kind of temperature that your nozzle is at at that moment. So at 200 degrees, if the temperature is reached, it's going to stay on that same temperature. By the way, this is a E3 V6 uh, style hot end. It's a clone. There are always two different kind of fans connected to your carry. One, make sure that your cooler blocks stays at a very specific temperature, making sure that your filament doesn't melt before hitting the nozzle. So that one should be always running if your printer is on. Then you have a fan on the front side in this case, that is this one, this one. Those are parts cooling fan. Those are not necessary, but getting better print results, it's always good to have something like that on a 3D printer. It improves the print quality much better. Then, some 3D printers comes with a auto bed leveling sensor or ABL. In this case, it's a proximity switch. This one sends when the bed made out of metal is sensing if it is high enough or not. You have also something called BL touch 
for something like the Ender 3 or different other 3D printers. The BL Touch works as a server motor. I can install a BL Touch on the Ender 3 Pro, but I didn't do that because I also want to manually level my beds. Um, maybe in the near future I will equip this 3D printer with a BL Touch, but at this moment I don't find it very necessary to do so. But a BL Touch has a little pin that is going to touch the build plate, a BL Touch. BL Touch is working almost the same as the proximity switch on a Prusa. When starting the bed leveling sequence, they're going to start and then they probe every part of the specific order. Then we have the heat bed. It's not necessary, but if you're printing other than PLA, like PTEG, ABS, or some other filaments, then a heat bed is required. Well, in this case, sometimes the heat bed isn't equipped with something like a glass plate. In this case, for the Ender 3 Pro, I have something called a... This is a Cabo Random glass bed from Creality. It has a special coating on top of it, making sure that during the print, the print will stick to the built surface. If you have the opportunity or the possibility to have a PEI spring steel sheet, that is also very nice to have. This is a PEI spring steel sheet. It's a... Uh, It's very cool sound. When done printing, you take it right off your build plate and then just flex it and then your print comes off with ease. For the glass bed, however, it's a different other story because when you are printing on something like this, you have to wait until it pops off. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but make sure to have something in between to making sure that you don't damage your glass bed. And then we have the Y-axis. The Y-axis has a timing belt, just like this one. In this case, it has a 30-30 aluminum extrusion, where the V-rollers, just like the gantry uh, and the carriage is running over it. Here, you have a 30-30 aluminum extrusion where the V-rollers are moving over it. And it uses a timing belt to get the plate moving. Also on the back side, we have a stepper motor with a limit switch. The limit switch, in this case, it's attached to the back side. When you're going to home your 3D printer, it goes automatically to the back side and then you hear, you hear this click. The same goes for this one. You have this click and also for the Z-axis, when it is going down, you have this click. So when when you are going to start using your 3D printer, in your slicer is automatically going to home your 3D printer. Meaning for every axis, it's going to a certain point where you hear this click and when done, it's, going, it's ready to start printing. So also for this 3D printer, we have smooth rods where the Y axis bed is moving over it. Here you have the bed frame. In this case, it's a 3D printer where I'm working on still, but the basic idea is smooth rods with some linear bearings and a timing belt that moves the Y axis from the bed, front to the back. Also on the back side, there is a stepper motor and also the end stop, making sure that when I'm homing my bed, that it is going to the right direction. Then we have the display. In both cases, we have some displays. This is an older version. This is one with a uh, non touch screen. This one has a touch screen. Originally, the Ender 3 Pro doesn't have a touch screen. So we have a push dial button and in this case also a reset button. Uh, the, the screen is in most cases attached with a ribbon cable. In this case, a 10 pins ribbon cable. And for some extra functionality to this screen, we have also a other cable running through it. The process style 
has also two ribbon cables, also 10 pins for both cable and it runs to a controller board. For this and the three, I don't have the controller board that I can show, but I have the old board just laying around. This is how we call the brain of the 3D printer. This makes your 3D printer actually going to work. This controller board has the connect connectors in green for your power. Power in and power out. Then you have here a whole row of connectors. Those connectors are for the end stops. Also, we have one also here, a connection for the fan. And on top, you got some ports for your stepper motor wires. Controller boards you have in different kind of shapes, also different kind of qualities. And also you got a 8-bit and a 32-bit. The bigger the bit size, the more capacity is on the controller board to do different kind of upgrades on a 3D printer. For example, a second stepper motor, uh, auto bed leveling, some other crazy features you can add to a 3D printer. Then some more information about stepper motors. Stepper motors come in different kind of shapes and different kind of forms. The most common form is the NEMA 17 form. And then we have also the power supply unit. In both cases, the power supply unit is attached to the right backside from the 3D printer. In the case of the Ender 3 Pro, I have put the, ex the, the power supply unit on the bottom behind or underneath the Y axis. For the Prusa style 3D printer, the power supply unit is on the backside just right here. I still need to do some work on it. Maybe I'm going to order a brand new one and attach it to there as well. Further, when you are operating a 3D printer, you can connect it with a USB cable and then you have also the standalone printing, offline printing. You can do it with a USB memory stick, but in most cases you have a micro SD card for the and the 3 Pro, here's also a micro SD card installed and we have a SD card. In this case, I can install it right here on the side of my screen and I can start printing. This video is supported by these Patreon supporters. Tony and Shannon, thank you for your support. You can also join by supporting this channel. Check the link in the description of this video. So to wrap up this video, as you can see, a 3D printer is a very cool and awesome machine to work with. It consists of many different kind of parts. And with this video, I try to name most of the parts of a 3D printer. So that you have some basic knowledge about a 3D printer. If you're still watching this video, you are amazing. Thank you. On the end card, there are some recommended videos worth watching. Please like this video, share this video with other people, and I will see you next time. And hey, let's make some fun with 3D printing. Sakri 3D Prints. Bye-bye.